What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel for the weekly outlook and reviews. So we're going to go over 15 pairs today and the pairs we're going to be looking at is the dollar index, pound yen, New Zealand dollar, Swiss franc, New Zealand dollar, USD, Aussie dollar, Swiss franc, Euro USD, Aussie dollar, USD, pound Aussie dollar, CAD Swiss franc, USD CAD, gold, Aussie dollar CAD, USD JPY, USD Swiss franc and Euro Swiss Frank. As I always say, this is just of my own opinion. So please understand this is not financial advice. Please make sure you're not taking these as signals. And at the same time, please make sure that you're using your strategy to your advantage and making sure that you're putting risk management first before you're thinking about your profits. the dollar index now as you can clearly see the market structure is clearly to the downside and we all know why this is what is happening in america right now is a pretty sad situation and obviously it's having an effect on their economy and now you can see a steep decline in dollar weakness now i want you to identify something here when we look at this when the market has created these lower highs previously, what you'll identify here is that the market has been respecting these lower highs and continued in this bearish pressure to the downside. Now, on each occasion when these lower highs were formed, you will notice price was not able to break above any of these structures. But now if we look at current price action when the lower high was formed here, now we're not talking about a strong pullback per se, we're just looking at where the market has pushed pull back, create those wick rejections, and then expecting the market to continue that lower low formation, we can see prices broken above. Now, we know why this has happened. Obviously, the events on Friday um, have pushed this market up or pushed the index up, the dollar index up just slightly, and we have broken above this structure. So what are we looking for moving forward to next week? Well, the questions we have when on our shoulders is, is the dollar going to recover What's happening with China and what's happening with these riots versus the jobs, etc., etc. When I'm looking at this, I mean, I'm not a fundamental trader, so I'm not trying to be the, uh, the, the fundamentalist out here. I'm just saying there are a few things that are going to decide what this market is doing. Now, my overall rule of thumb is if the market structure is down, then that's what I'm going to be looking for until the market tells me otherwise. Selling opportunities. With this structure, I will also identify, though, that price has broken above its previous lower high. We have a close above this structure, as you can clearly see here. And this is where the wicks and the bodies lie. And we finally had an attempt to push up on this structure, which failed. And then a final candle that closed above, um, ending into the close on Friday. What I'm going to be looking at on this market structure is how the market is going to continue with this bullish pressure for the open to see if we're going to have a gap up or a gap down in this market. Now, if we have a gap up, I'm obviously going to be looking for the market to come back to some of these levels for a retest before a continuation. And then just to the left, I'm going to be using structures for targets just to make sure that this ain't just a strong pullback. And if I am to take buys, that I have enough range to manage my trades to break even. If the market decides to gap down, then what I'm going to be looking for on this structure is just to see how the market can leave this area for a period of time. When it's ready, it can come back just to indicate a strong retest and call it and see if we can get back to some of these target highs if not then the gap down would just be looking for the continuation of this overall trend and then looking for some retest again with your wick rejections engulfing candles whatever you want to call it and then look for the continuations to the downside so this is how i see the dollar index at this moment in time are we in for a reversal or are we going to see a continuation i mean that's the big picture but obviously we've whittled it down by creating a plan and then we're going to see what happens on the market open going into Monday slash Tuesday. Next pair we'll take a look at is pound yen. Now, I don't see any reason to suspect that there's going to be a reversal on this market at the moment. We can see a surge in pound strength. Now, it would be unwise, if that's a word, to assume that this market is going to reverse. So for that reason, we are bull bias on pound yen especially at market open into Monday slash Tuesday. Now, target areas on this market is very difficult because I'm not going to be going to the left to look for those targets. But what I'm going to be identifying is how structure moves. So the market pushes and it exhausts. Now, this was a consolidation phase in the market where price wasn't able to break above for a long period of time. After the breakout of this structure, you can see here that the market came to retest this level. 
Now we had about 12 hours worth of information here of bearish pressure, as you can see with the wick projections. But if you notice here, price wasn't able to break back into this consolidation. This is just an overall sign of this continued bullish structure. And after the retest of this structure, we've had this continuation to the upside. I would be more than happy for price to pull back to retest some of these levels, then for the continuation to the upside. Because at the moment, I don't really have anything to work with. So right now, this is my plan of action at market open leading into Monday slash Tuesday. It's simple. There's no reason for me here to rush looking for sales. There's no reason here for me to be looking for buys at any premature areas in the market. We're just waiting for the market to come back to a sustainable level where it has reacted to before, create the level, shown signs that it's not able to break below structure. And then all I'm going to be looking for is that continuation to the upside. So pretty simple analysis. If the market comes back, then you know the deal. If the market doesn't break above or gap above this level on Sunday open, then I'm going to be looking for some target areas once price comes back to this level for a continuation to the upside. Once we do that, as you can see here, we have a beautiful range of around 200 pips, and that is more than enough to be able to scale down to your lower time frames to look for some really good entries and take advantage of this range that we have here with this retest level back to some of these structural highs. So this is how I see pound yen. The next pair that we're going to move on to is New Zealand dollar Swiss franc. Now we have seen a weak Swiss franc for quite some time now. And as you can see, the market is strong to the upside. Now look at the structures on this pair and look at the structures on pound yen. They're almost identical. So what are we going to do in this situation? Well, let's do this. Let's take the consolidation area where price was failing to break above for a period of time. Once price broke this structure, we never had a retest. There was a strong surge in bullish pressure. So how do we work this structure? Well, we do know how structure works. Once price makes a higher high, it always makes a higher low if it's going to continue to the upside. So what we can do is now that this structure has been violated, the consolidation range in sideways moving market has been violated, we don't need to use it anymore. Now, price usually does come back to retest some of these levels. So we'll be very mindful of that. But what I would like to work with is structure. So if this is the push phase and this is the exhaustion, then what we're going to be working with is the higher low structure. We're going to be waiting to see how price trades above this key level. Doesn't necessarily need to come back, but we're going to be waiting for price to come back or in and around this level to see how it holds above for continued bullish pressure. Now, if the market pulls back to make this higher low, then what we can look for the market to do is retest the previous structure high and see how the market continues to the upside. If not, then we'll just wait for structure to form back at some of these key levels or we'll wait for the higher low. We have to see what happens here. So my bias on New Zealand dollar Swiss franc moving forward into Sunday open, Monday slash Tuesday is still bull bias. Until we get a true representation of a reversal, which is price failing to break structures, double tops, lower highs, strong bearish pressure, breaking previous structural lows. This is how I'm seeing this pair at this moment in time. Now, the reason why I have this pullback to this level is because I'm going to see how price comes back to its own structural high for that retest. If we have a retest at this level, then this is completely fine. But I'm not opposed to it breaking this and coming back to this previous structural high low for a double bottom continuation to the upside. So this is how I see New Zealand dollar Swiss franc. The next pair that we'll take a look at is New Zealand dollar USD. Now we know why this is going up clearly because of the weak dollar now the question is are we going to have a reversal in this market we see here now around 16 hours worth of rejection which means price is failing to break above this structure now unless price breaks above this structure then i wouldn't at this moment in time oh sorry unless price respects this level and starts to pull away and come back to respect to make double tops i wouldn't start to look for the reversal just yet let's identify the structural higher low where price is broken above before made that higher low and then shown signs of strong bullish pressure amidst all the bearish pressure that we see here failing to break the structure in this continuation. So this is how I'm seeing my range at this moment in time that I'll be looking to trade. The next thing that I'll be looking for is to see if we can break above the structure for that retest continuation. This is how structure moves, right? Now, if we don't break this structure, then the second scenario I'm going to be looking for is to see how this level is respected. Now, with the dollar weakness, it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be weak versus New Zealand dollar, even though it has been for a long period of time. But what I'm trying to make sense of here right now is why are we not breaking this high? So unless we break this high, then I'm going to be looking for the behavioral change. Just in case we don't break above this structure, 
we stick within this range and whatever else because what i want to avoid doing is taking buys prematurely and then seeing the market reverse or pull back to some of these levels and not being able to sustain this bullish pressure by then getting caught out in the price pushing back to the downside and then creating lower highs before it continues down so what am i trying to say here because i'm saying a lot to be honest with you this is my plan if this structure height is broken then i'll be looking for buys after the retest if the market doesn't break this structure then i'm going to be looking for at least the double top for the continuation or i'm going to just be waiting patiently for price to violate some of these structural lows once this is done then i can start to see and this may not happen until tuesday wednesday to be honest with you i can start to see that the bears are taken over this market so this is my plan for new zealand dollar usd this pair specifically is more of a waiting game because we don't really know the true strength of the new zealand dollar versus the dollar at the moment other than the fact that it's bullish and we don't know how the new zealand dollar is going to sustain itself in terms of this bullish pressure versus the dollar so let's wait and see these two scenarios is my plan or will be my plan moving forward into next week next pair we'll take a look at is aussie dollar swiss franc again uh, swiss franc weakness we can see the structure of this market is to the upside now what we have here is a level in the market where price was not able to break above or below now we call this a consolidation or a sideways moving market what are we looking for now well we're going to look to see how this level starts to hold because if the market is broken above it this is indicating first and foremost continued bullish strength now price hasn't exactly left this area and come back to it as much as we would like it to do so if the market comes back to this level here this consolidation and it starts to show signs of continued bullish pressure even if it peaks back in it's fine what we're going to be looking for is for that momentum shift indicating that bullish pressure what i want to see the market doing is breaking above its own high this will just give me some more confidence or this will give me more confidence should i say to illustrate that the bulls are still in control of this market once we get that, then I can look for that retest and that continuation to the upside. Now, I don't have any ranges to work with to the left here, so I'm just going to be sticking to my trading plan, which is a minimum one to three risk reward ratio, managing my risk before my reward so that if I hit my targets, I hit my targets. And if I don't, I manage my risk. So this is my plan. Now, with this consolidation, as I said, it hasn't been broken to the upside or the downside. So this strength here is indicating a continued bullish structure or potential continued bullish structure on this market. So this is my plan for Aussie dollar Swiss franc. As I said, if we come back to retest this level, let's just get the bullish pressure, the momentum shift in this back to the upside, break this high, then look for some retest. If price pulls back and doesn't violate some of these structural lows here, then I will still be looking for those buying opportunities around here, right? I will still be looking for those buying opportunities because how I see the market is pushed, exhaust into this level, key level where price is failing to break below, and then we could be looking for that double bottom. But I much prefer this high to be broken first. So this is a plans uh, with Aussie dollar Swiss franc moving into next week. The next pair that we'll take a look at is Euro USD. Now take a look here. We have more structure to work with. We have a structural high in this market where price was not breaking above for a very long period of time. By the looks of it, we've got about 20 hours worth of information here. This is a strong sign of bearish pressure. We can see three strong wick rejections here, indicating that the bears are trying to step into the market. So if this market is going to reverse versus the euro, I want to see the market leave, come back to some of these levels and then look for that continuation to the downside. What am I going to be working with in terms of continued bullish structure? Well, it's pretty simple. Taking the higher low, as long as price does not break above this structure, then we're good still for buys. The only time I'm selling this is for the retest double top. If the market doesn't come back for the retest, then I'm going to be waiting for the break of the structure, then the retest. I want this low to be taken out. Then I'll look for the retest and then a the continuation. So this is plan number two next thing if the market is going to continue bullish then you know the deal with this let's take out this high let's see how price retest this high and then let's let's look for those continuations this is my plan with euro usd this is my technical bias not fundamental bias so this is my plan and this is how i'm going to be waiting patiently to see what the market's going to do next pair we'll take a look at is aussie dollar usd same scenario over here versus the euro versus the dollar we have structural highs on this market where price is indicating strong bearish pressure this structure is not broken look at this we can draw it like this to say the price action is broken and now we're retesting but it would be pretty absurd 
to ignore the fact that we have around 12 hours worth of information here of bearish pressure. It's better to be safe than sorry. So what we'll do is we'll count for this area here. We count it for this wick, this wick, and as many of these wicks as we possibly can. For continued buys, let's see a strong break above this structure. Let's see a retest of this structure and then the continuation. If we're not breaking this structure, then what I'm going to be looking for for the reversal, well, this is my structural level here, my low. If this gets taken out, then I'm good for sales all day long because this is now indicating bearish pressure, failure to make a new high, structural low being violated. Then I'll just be looking for the retest and then the continuation. It's pretty simple. It's almost like a range here in a bullish structure. So let's see how this one plays out next week. Next pair we'll take a look at is pound Aussie dollar. Now, as you can clearly see, we've had a strong Aussie dollar versus the pound uh, quite recently. But during last week, towards the latter end, we can see the market started to consolidate, moving sideways, indicating a potential depletion in that Aussie dollar strength. Now, what are we waiting for? Well, you know the deal, and I do it every single week. We're going to be waiting for price to violate the higher retest continue as a consolidation or break the previous structural low retest for a continuation. And that's as simple as it is. We don't need to make up any theories here. We don't need to try to over dissect this. We're just going to wait patiently for the market to leave this range either to the upside or downside and then look for those continuations once we get a retest. This is going to give us a true bias of the market sentiment or at least closer to the market sentiment because it will give us evidence that price is now finally finding momentum and we have a directional bias. So that's my bias on pound Aussie dollar. Next pair we'll take a look at is CAD Swiss franc. Now we have a strong impulsive move to the upside here violating the structure. The overall directional bias of this market is to the upside clearly. We can see the market is pushing up. Now what am I going to be looking for here in this market structure? Well, I'm going to be very mindful of how the market closed on Friday. Strong bearish pressure. Now, what I'm going to be looking for is to see how price key stays above its own higher lows. This will indicate continued bull structure for this moment in time until we enter a range. What I'm going to be looking for, what I'm not going to be looking to buy the highs. I want price to come back to some of these previous structures for a continuation or potentially come back down to these structural lows to indicate this bearish pressure depletion in this bearish pressure, a bullish sentiment, and then bullish continuation based on the overall structure of the market. If the market pulls back to some of these level lows, then I'll be using these levels as target areas just to make sure that I'm checking my range for when buying this market. And if the market is not going to pull back to any of these levels, then you know the deal. Let's see this continued bullish pressure, exhaustion retest, and then a continuation to the upside. Pretty simple across all the pairs we've analyzed, same sequence. Just waiting for the market to pull back for a retest and then looking for that continuation. This is how I see the market at this moment in time on CAD Swiss franc. Next pair we'll take a look at is USD CAD. Now we know we've had a strong CAD and we know we've had a weak dollar. And as you can clearly see here, this structure that was forming, which was a consolidating sideways moving market has now finally been broken. Look here. This was a consolidation sideways moving market that has been broken. Now we have the continuation. What is this a sign of looking at past history? Well, a potential continuation on this market. I would love to see the market come back to retest some of these levels for continuation. And this is going to be my only plan on USD CAD because at the moment the market is in a push phase, which means I cannot sell this market. I just need to wait for the market to exhaust back. Give me that retest. Give me a safe stop loss range and a range to work with in order to make sure I can manage my trades to break even and then look for that continuation. Is there any signs of a reversal on this market? No, there's not. So this is just the simple plan I'm going to be following at market open into Monday slash Tuesday. Next pair we'll take a look at is gold. Now, is there a recovery in gold at this moment in time? Not sure. What I'm seeing on this market structure in as an overall is a sideways moving market. OK, now I haven't really liked trading gold recently because of how the structure is moving. Now, I know I don't scroll back to past history, but take a look at this, right? The market is just doing bits at the moment. It's moving sideways. If we take the overall current structure of the market, the market is violating previous structures and making lower highs for continuations. With this current sentiment, what I would be very mindful of is just making sure how price is reacting in and around this level. If we're going to take continued sales from this level, 
What I would need the market to do is finally, after a very long period of time, break this level, retest, and then continue. If we start to break this structure and close below, then this is something that the market hasn't done for a long period of time. This will be a good indication of continued bearish pressure and structure forming. But if the market is not able to break this structure, it does not mean I'm not going to be looking for buys. With the overall sentiment of this market being sell bias with these structural highs, lower highs and breaks of previous structure, I'm going to be looking to see how the market respects its previous lower high. Are we going to stay below this level? And if we do, then I have a range to work with from this structural lower high back down to this major key level in the market. So I'll be looking to see how the market pulls back, creating some sort of lower highs or double tops of these structures to then see if we have a continuation from this structural level in the market or from a lower high that may form around 50% of this previous push phase. So my bias on gold at the moment is sell bias more than buy bias and these are the plans I'll be looking for. A break of structure, retest continuation or at least a pullback or lower high for a continuation back using this as my range or a retest of the previous lower high and then looking for those wick rejections engulfing candles and continuations to the downside. Next pair that we'll take a look at is Aussie dollar CAD. Now, as you can clearly see, the market structure is pushing to the upside. Now, just like we just monitored on our previous pair, we need to understand what's happening here. Even though the market looks like it's breaking above this structure, let's identify where the wicks are giving the reactions. We can see price failing to break above, break above, and then bearish pressure or continue bearish pressure throughout here. And now we're starting to see a shift in momentum. This does not mean sell bias. We have our major key level here. If the price is going to continue in a sell bias structure, then it's going to trend, just like we have here with this bullish structure. So I'll be patient enough to wait for price to take out its low, look for that retest and see the continuation. If the market starts to take out its high, then that's a strong indication of continued bullish pressure with this overall structure of this market. My two plans are break above, retest, continuation for a continued trend to the upside and for selling opportunities. There's no way I'm selling here with this small range and all this noise to the left. I'll just be waiting for the market to break, violate the structure, retest, and then look for that continuation to the downside. Next pair we'll take a look at is USD JPY. Now, JPY or yen is uh, not doing too well at the moment across the board. Um, we can see that this market structure is clearly pushing to the upside. Now, in terms of structure, it's very hard to work with. We do have a structural higher low here and a higher low here. Then we have a slight break above structure and a retest level here. Now, I can't work like this with this pair, to be honest with you, because, you know, it's just not clear and I don't feel comfortable guessing where the market is going to come back to. What I will say is that this is an area here in the market where price is reacted to the most. We can see wick rejections, higher lows. We can see price breaking above this previous level here, which was a higher high. It came back to retest this level and now we have a continuation up. By the time price comes back to this level, the structure of this market is going to change with lower highs and lower lows. So I would need, if the market comes back to this key level, I would need to see the market leave this level, indicating bullish pressure, create some sort of higher low first. And then once I get that indication of wick rejections, bullish candles, whatever else, then I could be looking to ride this market back to the upside. Now, the question is, is the market going to come back to these levels? Well, I don't know. And to be honest with you now, I feel like I've spent way too much time on this pair, which simply means I do not know what's happening with this. I do understand that it's bullish. I just don't have key levels to work with. So just to keep it simple, I'm not going to draw anything else here. I'll just keep this as a target area if we have a strong enough pullback on this market, just to check my range to manage my trades. And I'll just like to see price come back to some of these key levels and look for those momentum shifts and change in directional bias. Next pair we'll take a look at is USD Swiss franc. So this market structure was sitting in a range for a period of time. Now, after it broke that range, look what happened. It immediately broke back into the structure. Now here we could look at this as whatever you want to call it, a stop hunt, a fake out, uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, so for that reason, if we all think different, but we all have the same idea, then we'll just look at this structure as like it never happened, okay? What we do is see an impulse of bullish pressure in this market structure, but at the same time, we never broke this structural high. So what are we going to do with a range bound market? Well, we're just going to wait for the break, retest and a continuation, keeping it super simple, making sure that we're on the right side of momentum and the structure is changing or identifying that the structure is changing. And then we'll hop on the bandwagon once the market decides what it wants to do. We don't need to be first. We can always be second or third and it's completely fine. So the last pair we're going to take a look at is Euro Swiss franc. This structure of the market is to the upside. We have a strong Euro versus a Swiss franc. We know the Swiss franc is currently weak. 
What I would like to see the market do with this structure is it's bullish is just pull back to create its higher low for continuation to the upside using some of these structure levels here as a retest level and look for that continuation. I'm not going to be looking for buys at this moment in time. I'm looking for the pullback to create enough range for me then to take a buy and then come back to some of these structural highs and make sure that I can manage my trades. Because the truth is, if price pulls back and it doesn't break this level, I want to make sure that I have enough range to take a trade. And especially on Euro Swiss franc, this range is quite big to get a decent sized stop loss and to take advantage of some good moves or at least to manage your trades to break even. So that's the 15 pairs for today. I hope you've enjoyed the analysis. As I always say, if you've enjoyed this content, please smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and until next time, take care.